Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, another video in, another video in our series uh, dealing with hypothesis testing, uh, is going to concentrate on what's known as the chi-square test of independence. Okay. Uh, now this particular test is different to the chi-squared uh, goodness of fit test. Uh, in a previous video when we had a look at the goodness of fit test, I suppose the question that we were trying to ask is, uh, is our observed distribution or is there evidence to suggest that our observed distribution uh, comes from some predefined distribution? And when we talk about predefined distribution, we're talking about a distribution uh, that, we, that we know its properties uh, and that we can actually calculate the probability of particular events uh, based off that of knowing that particular distribution. This is subtly different. It's a chi-square test of independence. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when we undertake this particular test, uh, that there's one single sample that's selected. Uh, and based from that particular sample, uh, we have uh, two categorical variables. And what we do is we basically count uh, the joint responses with respect to two categorical variables, and we place them into a contingency table. Uh, but maybe just to motivate this particular example, I suppose the question that I have, the question, okay, the question that I want to try to find an answer to is, is there a relationship, is there a relationship, a relationship uh, between, between a person's age, a person's age, okay, and the model, the model, okay, of mobile phone, of mobile phone, okay, uh, that they use that they that they use okay uh, so I'm going randomly I'm go I need a data set okay to actually to actually make this work okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna randomly let's assume that I've randomly selected 365 uh, people from some population and I ask them the question uh, what's their age and also what brand of mobile phone do they use and let's say for argument's sake that the age categories were 20 to 30 years of age let's say 30 to 40 years of age uh, 40 to 50 years of age and the brands of mobile phone that they use were they were with well, let's say the mobile phone mm, yeah let's say Vodafone okay as an example uh, let's say HTC and let's say Apple okay uh, and what we noticed was from this particular sample okay we got the following observations okay so I'm just going to do a contingency table with respect to this particular this particular uh, sample there was 365 uh, people in total that were questioned 20 20 people that were in the 20 to 30 year old years age category said that they were with Vodafone. Uh, 80 said they were with HTC. Uh, 40 said they were with Apple. Uh, 15 said that they were with Vodafone that were in the 30 to 40 year category. Uh, 60 were with HTC. 65 were with Apple. And then finally in the 40 to 50 year old category we had 5 were with, H with Vodafone. Uh, we had 50 that were with HTC. And we had 30 that were with Apple. Maybe you can actually check that the sum of these particular values does actually add to 365. Okay, so in total, what? How many 20 to 30 year olds had we got? We had a total of 140. 30 to 40 year olds, we have 140, and finally the 40 to 50 year olds, there were 85 in this particular sample. With respect to the people that use Vodafone, uh, there was 40. HTC there was 190 and Apple there was 135 okay so these are the observed these are the observed the observed the observed frequencies okay frequencies in indicating how many people were in within particular categories okay and the question we're trying to ask is this is that is there a relationship between a person's age and the brand of mobile phone that they're going to choose okay now the important thing that this, the I suppose the important, let's say, uh, r th this particular test relies on a particular property associated with the multiplication rule. Okay, now don't forget the multiplication rule, the multiplication rule. Okay, the multiplication rule says that the probability of A and B, okay, is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. So it's equal to the pro product, uh, probability of A times the probability of B, when both events are independent of each other. 
okay? Independent, okay? Otherwise, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, knowing that A has occurred or conditioned on A, okay? If this happens when they're dependent on each other, okay? Now, this is an important fact because this particular assumption here, we're going to assume that they're independent of each other, okay? In which case, we're going to calculate probabilities based off this particular this particular scenario, okay? Where the product of A and B is simply equal to the probability of A times probability of B. So, for example, uh, the probability of randomly selecting somebody and that they're 20 to 30 years of age, okay? The probability that they're 20 to 30, okay? And that they're with Vodafone, okay? With Vodafone, okay? The probability of that happening would be, well, if they are... If they are independent, it would be the probability that they're 20 to 30, okay, times the probability that they're Vodafone, okay, uh, which is equal to, well, how many 20 to 30 year olds are there? In total, there are 140 of them, so there's 140, uh, relative to 365 observations, okay, or a sample size of 365. The probability that they're Vodafone, okay, would be, well, there's 40 Vodafone people uh, out of a total of 365. Okay, which gives us a proportion. This gives us a proportion or a probability, okay? Now, what we would expect to happen is this, is that if they were independent of each other, okay? Don't forget, probabilities are from 0 to 1. If I multiply them by 100, I get a percentage, yeah? If they were independent, I would expect that this proportion of the total amount, okay? Of the total amount, yeah, okay? Uh, would be what should happen. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to get back to that now in a moment. Yeah, this is how we're going to calculate our expected frequencies. Okay, and let me maybe just put that into perspective for you. Okay, so we have our observed frequencies. Okay, what we need to do is we actually need to calculate our expected frequencies. What would we assume to happen? Sorry, what would we expect to happen? Yeah, if there if there was if they were independent, if there was no relationship between 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 the age, the age. Okay and the brand of phone okay and the brand of mobile phone what would we expect to happen so we have our observed frequencies here we need to build our expected frequencies okay so let me just maybe just rationalize that here for us okay so the expected frequencies okay okay let's say our expected frequencies so here's our expected